Good morning. So basically today all I have left is the back deck. This is now going to be dura decked. So I have to make it slope. So I'm cutting shims that are an inch and a half to nothing. So the water will slope out that way. And I have to put a shim on every one of these joists. And then two at the ends. Mark an inch and a half here. Put my straight edge on it. Rip it. All right, so we'll just stack them here. Get this out of here. Okay, so this will be our first one we do. May as well get a few of these guys. So this is just to glue my wedge or shim to the joist. I love this floating deck. No posts at the corners. It's cool. Okay, all the shims are on. Now we will start uh, sheeting it. So I think instead of going up the stairwell, which will be a nightmare, I'm gonna go around to the back and just lean it up against the back deck and then slide it up on the back deck and onto the floor. Okay, this is the last one. Only need four sheets. That's that guy. Let's throw this scrap up so I can cut on the floor without putting saw curves in the floor. So we'll snap a nice straight line. Um, it doesn't matter if I got an eighth or a quarter of an inch gap up against the house. This is now where I'll set the tongue of my plywood. Seven, eight. So run the glue up to the line. Whoops. Okay, let's go get a sheet. Okay, a little bit of wrestling here to get it in the right position while balancing. It's going good though. Okay, I see my red line. Flip it back, drop it. Okay, that worked nice. So here, I'm gonna find my red line. There it is. I've got tap.
Turns out I'm out of nails in my pouch, so I'm looking for leftovers. And right here. Okay, it's tacked. Okay, so this end piece is gonna be 36 and three quarters, and I'm gonna add two and an eighth. 37, three quarters, 37, seven eighths. Next piece is 50 and a half. Should mark out the joists. It's a little hard to find them sometimes, if you're guessing. Okay, that's the first row. Oops, that guy went MI8. All right, second row. Okay, next one is gonna be eight feet by 25 and a quarter. Twenty-five and a quarter by thirty-eight and a quarter. Twenty-five and a quarter. Want to lay out the floor joists because you certainly can't find them here. So just simple little mark makes your life a lot easier. Okay, <clears throat> done. Next thing, we gotta put a nosing on here. <clears throat> so, this measurement is, you need two sticks, two pieces of nosing at 73 and a half, and one at 184 and a quarter. 73 and a half. And the other one at <clears throat> 73 and a half. 184 and a quarter. Okay, put this on at about, I don't know, we'll go 10 degree bevel. If you want to figure out your center, it's going to be a bit off because of the bevel. The long inch and three quarter, inch and seven. Got it. Okay, now set it to a forty five. Cut seventy three and a half. both of them. So 184 and a quarter, I marked the wrong side there. <clears throat> 184 and a quarter, long to long. Rotate it. <clears throat> Cut it. Okay, let's go install that. It's the nosing. 36 by 48, not what I thought. Forty-eight by thirty. Not three oh. Ah. 
Okay, this with this. <clears throat> Sawdust plugging me up. Start a couple. Excuse me, sorry, I'll uh, try to quit clearing stuff out. So, this is, has a bevel. If you look at it, this side is on a 10 degree, this is on 10 degree bevel. This will be to the outside. So now, when they wrap this with Duradec, I'm hoping it's Duradec, this will become a drip. So all I do is squeeze it with my finger, bring it right to the edge. Perfect. So now the front bull nose or nosing. Oops, let's get that back on board. Beautiful weather today, by the way. A little here. Start a couple. All right. Oh, let's not get glue all over the deck. Here we go. It's a little heavy. Nobody move. Okay, I need a screw in there to tighten that up. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, start a couple again. Bring it over. Slip it in. Perfect. Okay, so that's the nosing all put on. Now, I'm gonna sheet that ply beam um, that way it'll bring it out flush with this sheeting and it'll just look better so this thing is 14 by 15 and a half I think yeah by now 71 and a half there's a lot of grace here because I can slip it behind here and then it'll be perfect so you can see I got three quarters of an inch gap Excuse me, so I can slide my ply plywood up in there so it don't have to be perfectly accurate with my cut, but not that that really matters. Okay, so now we'll make this perfectly flush at the bottom of the beam. Um, what's going on? there. Why am I having trouble here? Oh yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so now it's just sheeted with OSB so it's all consistent. It's looking good. Okay, so just finishing the paper. This is something I'm not completely used to. I don't mind it though.
we don't do this in southern Alberta as framers because well the wind would remove it and I'm not saying it's always windy endlessly in southern Alberta it's just a lot of wind often and it would just not be fun paper up inside there last piece of paper here okay we are done so that is it for the white fish project it went well, had a little trouble coming out the gates just due to the beams, but that's it. It's done, got my soffit backing in here. Uh, yeah, looks good, neat little building. Thank you for watching, you all take care, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, maybe a little more footage. Shout out to my brother Pete for letting me stay at his place down here just north of Whitefish. It was probably 11 or 12 minutes from the job site. So thanks Pete.